What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Movie Resurrection Review. I'm Jay. And I'm Tim. Today, we're going to be talking about Better, Better Off, Off Dead. Dead. Oh, that was cute. We yes, harmonized yeah. that. That was oh. very cute. Better Off Dead is the story of Lane Meyer, who uh, the rundown basically is his girlfriend broke up with him right before Christmas, and he kind of gets a little suicidal. And throughout the movie, he pretty much finds himself, finds new love, and realizes that things are worth living for. Okay, so Better Off Dead was written and directed by Savage Steve Holland, who, if uh, I'm correct, also, also created Eek the Cat cartoon back in the 90s as well. Um, this movie came out in 1985, August 1985. How did we do on money on this film? Uh, the budget was three point five million, which okay, that's a, that's an alright budget. It made at the box office ten point three million, which is a pretty, win pretty in good. anyone's yeah. eyes. You know, I think this is probably going to be one of the more maybe known obscure movies that we're going to do on here. But we loved this movie growing up, and it's been it's on our list, and it's and you know, we want to do it, so we're going to do it. Uh, ten point three million. The budget of three point five. I mean, that's successful. Um, you know what? I wish we could find. I wish we could find like sales and rental numbers. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I heard movies, the VHS uh, part of it really saved it. Right. And which in a lot. Sorry, in a lot of cases, and I don't know if we've touched on this or not, but in a lot of cases, especially back then, um, whenever it went to home video and it went to rental stores, Blockbuster and the like. Um, that it really shot the, uh, the the numbers up as far as revenue made. I don't know. I don't know that we can't find it. Maybe we're just not that good at research. I don't know. Anyways, let's get back into the movie. Um, again, written and directed by Savage Steve Holland. <clears throat> it stars John Cusack. Um, was this your first? Your first? Uh, I guess. Go at John Cusack. Like, is this how you discovered him? Um, it would be uh, Stand by Me, but I didn't know who he was. He had such a small part in right. Stand by Me. This was the actual right. main character um, movie that I saw him in. So I, yeah, I think it would have been Stand by Me as well. And I don't know that if Stand by Me came out before or after this doesn't really matter. Um, you know, your first kind of introduction to somebody's first introduction to somebody mm -hmm. right uh but yeah if it was stand by me for me too then yeah he had such a small role in that one um do you guys remember he was uh what's his name will wheaton's character's older brother anyways uh john cusack plays lane meyer uh curtis armstrong um also known as dudley dawson aka booger from revenge of the nerds he's i mean you know it's not like his name is dudley dawson that was Character's name in Revenge of the Nerds. Anyways, he plays Charles, his best friend, uh, Diane Franklin, David Ogden Steers, Kim Darby, Dan Schneider. Is that right? Is that yes. That's the guy's name? Yeah. Um, he plays Ricky. Who plays Monique, the foreign exchange? Because she actually has a pretty big, uh, um, big role Diane in this. Diane Franklin. Diane Franklin is Diane not Franklin. Monique. It is Monique. Thank you. I lied. Thank you. <laughs> You're Thank welcome. You, sir. All right, so let's get into the movie. Better off dead. Okay, so I do want to... I do want to... Um, I want to start this review out by saying this movie was surprisingly weird. Yeah. And I don't yeah. know I don't know if it's just been so long spinning all over the place here. I don't know if it's been so long since we've seen the movie, but I do I did have do and did have very fond memories of this movie. Um, I got to be honest. I don't think it's been that long since I've seen it. I would probably say, and here I go, ten years. That's a long time, right? <laughs> it's. I guess it has been a while. But it was just. It was. It was weird, in in the aspect that like, nothing really flowed together from scene to scene. It was almost like every scene was just kind of while it was following a story. It was like it was kind of independent from itself. And it's like, how much weird can we throw into this film? And and the, the the thing is, though, as weird as that was, did it not work? No, I liked it. I liked it. Right? It's it my worked. type of weird, you know? Just off-the-wall crazy stuff, you know? It the is. only thing it was missing was someone entering the house through the window. Like, crashing through the window, because that's what type of movie it was, yeah, you know? Yeah, pretty much. Um, this is a comedy. It's a, a, a rom-com, I guess you could you could call it, before before the term rom-com was even coined, I guess. Uh, romantic comedy. Mm. You looked confused. Mm. You know, movies fall in several genres all the time, 
uh, rom-com is kind of its own genre these days, like sci-fi horror, like Alien. You know, it's kind of in that dual, that, that dual category kind of thing going on. That was my best, worst Robert De Niro impression right there. I don't know. Anyhow, the movie starts uh, right before Christmas, and we see Lane getting up, getting ready uh, to go to skiing tryouts. He's trying out for the high school ski team. And, um, oh man, there's, there was some weird, like, I'm right off the muscle, right off the right muscle, right off the bat. He some... takes a shower with his socks on. Now, maybe those, maybe those are his lucky socks. You know, baseball players don't change their change socks. socks wash maybe this is like a work right. around because if you're not changing your socks, you're, you're, you have to clean them somehow, Yeah, you know, it even shows him air drying his socks. Yeah. When he's out of the, yeah, out of the, out of the shower, shower. Uh, which... blow drying his, his socks. When he comes downstairs and his family's having breakfast, his brother, for whatever reason, was taking like the UPC symbols and cutting them off. The so, melon orders for the yeah, for the, the mel- uh, for the cereal boxes. Yeah, the little so, sea monkeys and laser rays <laughs> and and whatever else catapults. It wasn't a catapult, but you get my my drift. It was a rocket ship at one point. How though. to build your own rocket? How to build ship, your own yeah. rocket? Yeah. So, anyways, again, it like starts off like what what's going on here. Um, but it, it, again, it, it works. So, anyways, let's let's get down to it here. So he's getting ready. He's, he's heading out the door for uh, trying out for the the high school skiing team. Um, which I don't know if that's a thing or not. Back in not the day, down here. not down here, right? Uh, for perspective, we live in <laughs> Texas, so definitely no skiing out here. So he goes to the tryouts, and he has a pretty good run, but his time was just a little bit long you had to you had to ski the k-12 from the marker uh and under a certain time i think it was like a minute or something a minute like that. 45 or something, something like that the the dude fucked him though the dude the dude started or, or stopped it after he crossed a couple seconds and to to, to yeah. disqualify him to keep the him off. same dude that his soon-to-be ex-girlfriend is macking on he's macking on her just a fucking he's a worm dude he's a fucking worm he's a worm yeah he's a worm so he doesn't make the ski team, and almost immediately after, Beth, his uh, girlfriend, breaks up with him. Now we find out in the movie that they've only been together like six months. Okay, but he is totally obsessed with this woman. <laughs> A lot of people might be like, "Well, that's really strange." Um, you know what? Good, good, good for you, Lane, and good for love. Hey, good hey, for love. Lane, by nature, is an artist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In his heart, he's a lover. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And by trade, he's a skier, damn it. Skier. He's actually yeah. a pretty decent skier. Yeah, he is, dude. He yeah. Ski. So one of the... Uh, what's the correct term I'm looking for here? One of the running themes in this movie is uh, skiing the K-12. Yeah. Okay? But not from like where he took off doing the uh, the, the time trial to get on the, the, the school skiing team. Like the peak. And there's only been one guy in this town who has skied the K-12... And it was, what is the dude's name? The worm guy. Google it. The guy, the guy Mac, the guy who steals his girlfriend, basically. Roy Stain, Stalin. Aaron Dozier. Aaron Dozier. Roy is the character's name. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, Roy. Roy. Yeah. Roy is the character's name. Roy steals Beth. Um, Roy keeps uh, Lane off of the skiing Ski. team, and Roy is the only one who has skied the K twelve from the peak. So from this point on, Lane has a series of suicide attempts that never work out for him. It's it's one of these kind of comedic bits where it's like, oh, this is dark, and I hate my I hate my life, and I'm going to kill myself. But wait, something's going to mess it up for you. It's going to be funny. And the very first one we see is he's about to hang himself in the garage with a uh, extension cord, and he literally says, "Wait a minute." This is, this is crazy. I'm not... What am I doing? This is nuts. And then his mom opens the door. He falls off the steps. <laughs> and he's sitting there swinging. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those things. You're such a mess up in life. You can't even get can't, suicide right. Pretty much. <clears throat> can't even get suicide right. So throughout the rest of the movie, he is trying to get uh, Beth back. And um, at one point, I guess Beth is a very sought after commodity. Because another thing going on throughout the movie, <laughs> other thing going on throughout the movie is people keep asking him 
if he minds if they date Beth. Which is respectful. Gotta be honest, that's but a respectful move. We right? got the math teacher, we got the mailman. Hang and on, we got wait, <laughs> wait, wait. One at a time. It gets weird because the math teacher. <laughs> yeah. Like, bro, she's, she's in high school. Okay. <laughs> Probably 17 years old. Driving yeah. off with her. <laughs> yeah. He holds Lane after class and he's like, hey, um, I heard you and Beth uh, broke up. It's kind of awkward, but uh, do you mind if I take her out? And, you know, he, he doesn't really know how to respond to that kind of thing. And then later on, you see them driving off. And uh-huh. kind of, yeah, he waves. He gives him a wave. And, yeah. Then the mailman, mm-hmm. who's delivering the mail, rings the doorbell and is like, Hey, um, I know I don't really know you, but uh, do you mind if I take out Beth? Just kind of shuts the door in his face. <laughs> so that and became, then you got Barney Rubble. On the TV, <laughs> says, uh, yeah, this is a little strange, me being a cartoon and all, but uh, how would you mind if I took Beth out? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, Barnsey of the rubble, man. So, anyhow, everybody wants his girl, and uh, he's trying to kill himself throughout <laughs> the movie, and also he is an artist, and he draws, and he has a very vivid imagination because his... His uh, artwork comes to life and kind of talks to him, you know. So he has several times, several outbursts doing during the uh, movie where he's he's talking to the drawing, and I think one of the drawings at one point even asked about taking Beth out, and I think there was a drawing with Beth, and she started talking shit like, "Look, you suck. You can't this. You can't that." Some cheerleader walks by and she's like, "Yeah, right." So he's <laughs> like, "Oh yeah, watch this." Gets up, yells at the drawing. Everyone's kind of looking at him, kind of thing. Another running bit throughout the film is the racing. The racing. The racing. The racing. Now, you see, we first get our look at uh, Yoji, Yuji Yokomato. Sorry for destroying your name, but he is America's favorite Okinawan bad boy <laughs> from Karate Kid 2 as Chosen. Chosen, yes. Language lessons. Inspiring words from a man who knows how to escape. So apparently these two guys are like from Japan or something and only one of them speaks English because he used to watch Why World of Sports with, was it Marv Albert? Yeah, I think so. I think it was Marv Albert. Is that right? You would know Howard Cosell. Not. Howard Cosell. Howard Cosell. That's who it was. So that's how he learned how to speak English. And for whatever reason, every time he pulls up to him at a at a red light or something, they got this speaker on the top of their car, <laughs> and he starts basically going into like kind of announcer mode and you know getting ready for the the race and all this stuff. So we have jumped all over the place with this movie so far. Just like the movie. Just like the movie. Okay, <laughs> fair, right? Um, it's funny we talked about doing this format and. Out the window. <laughs> Out the window. Okay. So in the meantime, you got his brother, right? Who, where Lane, everything he touches turns to shit. His brother, everything he touches turns to pure gold. The melon order stuff that he gets. The laser gun. His one uh, one scene. Lane walks in, walks in his room. And is like, why are you wasting your time with all that stuff? And he's working on this laser gun that you melon order away. That you know is a toy. Well, he points it at the the box it came in actual laser comes out catches the thing on fire so he makes everything happen there's a time when he uh, gets a book on how to pick, pick up uh, slutty women so I think that was the name of the book how to pick up slutty women Lane's going up to his room hears some laughter and stuff <laughs> chick laughter he opens his brother's door and there's like four or five chicks all they stop doing what they're doing and he's like okay turns around how to build your own rocket ship out of uh, home home uh, stuff the stuff around the house and it actually works it takes off the brother's badass. Brother's badass. Probably had real sea monkeys about two feet tall. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know. The other running bit throughout the film is the paperboy. I want my two dollars. Paperboy needs to get paid for delivering the papers, right? So he's going around the entire time, the entire movie, after Lane to get the two bucks, which is kind of weird because it's not Lane's house. It's not Lane's, <laughs> it's, it's not Lane's subscription. It's the parents, right? So right. he's like, give my two bucks. And Lane's like... I ain't got it, man. What do you want me to do? Right. I ain't got it. So that's actually a funny bit. And at one point, the kid like skis off of <laughs> of, of a, a cliff. <laughs> two dollars. <laughs> like uh, two dollars. <laughs> okay, so let's get into the movie. Let's tell you guys more about the movie. Uh, shit, you know what? You can just turn this review off. Go watch the movie. The movie's good. You know what? The freaking nine. It's over. Yeah, Forget about yeah. it. The freaking nine. No, we're gonna keep going. Movie starts. 
Lane gets up, gets ready for ski trials. He goes. He doesn't make the, doesn't make the team. His girlfriend breaks up with him. What are you laughing at? <laughs> we're, we're, we're way past that. We're way past that. I know. So uh, I'm, I'm really doesn't happy. make the ski, doesn't make the team. Yeah. Tries uh, failed attempts at suicide. Doesn't work out for him. Tries to win her back. Doesn't work out for him. Decides to find a. Uh, on accident, a new love interest. Okay, so that's kind of... It, and it's funny, because like you said, like we're kind of jumping in, like... It's like, if you're watching this, I, I don't like blame you. If you're like, what are you two idiots battling about? Like, you're not making any sense. This is the movie when you watch it. It's, yeah. it's just a, a random series of events. It's like, this happened, now this happened, now this happened, like now this happened. And while it all kind of goes together, because, I mean, it's, it's in the same movie, mm-hmm. it's like... Wait a minute. You were just trying to kill yourself. Now you're sitting at the dinner table. <laughs> Your mom's cooking a tentacles. Cooking tentacles. The neighbor blows herself up because she, she drank kerosene. Thought it was some kind of liquor. Yeah, that's this kind of movie is what we're trying to tell you. It's this kind of movie. Oh, shit. Okay. Where are we at? So... New love interest. New love interest. He there's a foreign exchange student named Monique who comes in uh, across the street with the neighbors, and one of the neighbors, the, the, the guy's name is Ricky. He's, um, he's, he's you know they're all the same age. They're all in high school together. Ricky likes her. He's kind of a slime ball, kind of like you know what I mean. So he come Lane comes home one night. He finds Monique throwing oranges, uh, oranges or, or something shit. at a sign, and she's mad and cussing and. You know, she's from, from France, so it, it, the only thing anyone's ever heard her speak is French. So, at one point, she goes off and starts talking English, and, and Lang's like, holy shit. You little faker. You little faker. You know, so they kind of have this little bond moment there, because she's she's not really happy in the house, because Ricky's a little scumbag, and the mom's not, not any better. You know, what does she say? She's trying point to set there. him up. With yeah, basically, she's trying to set him up, you know, and she's like, oh, they speak the international the language, language of love. love. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> yeah, almost almost like, like Ursula. Yeah. Body language. Body language. <laughs> so, at this point, they start hanging out quite a bit. And, again, this is what I said at the beginning of this. He finds love unknowingly, like you said. You know, on accident, he finds a new love interest. And she basically gives him confidence. Yeah. She, she's a huge catalyst in this movie for him building his confidence back up. Um, so he can go and ski this K-12. Even helps him with skiing lessons. Even helps him with skiing lessons, yes. Faces his badass Camaro. She has, what's a 67 Camaro? S-S. Oh, S-S. Mm. oh it's, pretty, it's pretty pretty choice. Yeah. Pretty choice. It's Bella. <laughs> Got that right there. <laughs> it's choice. So yeah, because of her, again, he gets his confidence back, and now at this point, he's challenging Roy just because Roy's a prick, right? You know, and, and and he doesn't even care about Beth anymore at this point. And while he's not recognized it in the movie yet, he hadn't verbally said it in the movie yet. You can clearly see what's going on with him and Monique, the foreign exchange sure, student, yeah. right? So. He gets up to the top of the K-12. You know, her and her and him are skiing, whatever. Someone comes down, his friend Charles, a.k.a. Booger from Revenge of the Nerds. He's like, hey, whole town's watching. Let's go get ready. He skis over one of his skis mm-hmm. and breaks the piece that, like, keeps him connected to the ski, the boot connected to the mm-hmm. ski. This is where the movie gets a little bit ridiculous again. So he jumps up at the top. Actually, you want to know what? I'm going to interject. I think that's the most uh, believable scene, this part, (laughs) in the whole fucking movie. This part? (laughs) Okay. Okay. on one ski. He's skiing on one ski. (laughs) So he jumps up to the top of the K-12. It's funny because the paper boy winds up at the top of the K-12 as well. (laughs) And he's like, I want my $2. So he hastily, Lane hastily jumps up there with Roy and is like, I'm, let's go. I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> scared of the paper boy. Scared of the paper boy. Not even giving a shit about Roy or the competition. Pretty much. Scared, <laughs> freaking scared of the paper boy. Now, again, Lane's not a bad skier. No. He just has not had the balls to, to, to ski the K-12 from, from the, the summit, the peak. So he jumps up there. They're both on the top. And they go, boom, right? And what's funny is Roy being the only one who has skied this thing. Now Lane is attempting it. 
And he's doing it on one ski because Charles broke, you know, the assembly that holds the boot to the ski. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now he's doing it harder. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. you got one leg now. Like, you got to have some, some good leg strength for all that sure. stuff. But now the paper boy is going down as well. So That's got, his motivation. <laughs> you got three people skiing the K-12 now. And this is where I said the paper boy winds up going off a cliff. You know, he didn't actually make it. <laughs> <laughs> He's all dazed. Uh, Two dollars. Two dollars. <laughs> he, he, he didn't actually make it. So they come down to the, to the finish line. Lane wins. Everybody's happy. Cheering. Blah, 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 blah. <sighs> You know, Beth, all of a sudden, she's like, fuck you, Roy. Lane, that's my dude. She's like, you've always been my dude. Gets on him. You gives know, him a kiss Gives him a kiss, shit. all that. Monique sees all this. You know, she she's taking the L right here. Ricky and the mom are like, let's go. Because they didn't really know she was out there mm-hmm. with Lane. Because she wasn't supposed to be. They were really controlling duo. Yeah. Ricky and Ricky's mom. Um. So they walk off, and of course, Beth, you know, she kisses Lane, and the, oh, the interview, greatest interview of all time. Chosen, what was what was the guy's character the name? UG, um, shoot, his character name? Yeah. Doesn't matter. Chosen. Chosen. He shows up in the gi. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, he, he's interviewing uh, 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 Lane, and he's like... Uh, I guess Lane, uh, what what uh, advice do you got? What words of wisdom do you got um, for for anyone out there? And uh, he's like language lessons, and he's like, well, and just language lessons, and he bolts. Yeah, because he's going after Monique, who speaks French language lessons, and they're speaking the international language of love. So he's like language lessons, inspiring words from a man who knows how to skate. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty thank good. you. Thank you. Pretty good. So he catches up with Ricky and with Monique. <laughs> <laughs> this part's funny. Catches up with Ricky and Monique. He goes, "Hey, hands off, hands off, monkey boy. That's my girl." Okay. And Ricky's like, huh, "We'll see about that." So they hit this little kind of fencing duel thing going on with, with, the, with the ski the, poles. With yeah, those the, things. Yeah, the, the ski poles. <laughs> Um, of course, you know, Lane is, is skinnier, more athletic and better looking. So of course he's going to win right here. <laughs> Let's not forget the main character in the movie. So the he has to get the, the chick. Yeah. So uh, good, better looking has nothing to do with anything. He defeats uh, Ricky and, uh, put, picks Monique up over his shoulder and takes her off like a caveman. Takes her off like a caveman. Well, in the meantime, I guess this other broad, she was seeing how Ricky was like fighting for his love and stuff or whatever. And she was like, ooh, I need a man like that. So she goes and picks this guy up while the mom is like, Ricky! 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 And he walks off into the sunset with this new love of his. Like, I guess, not forced. She picked him. She picked she him. She picked him. She wasn't forced upon yeah. him. So, and, well, I mean... That's the fucking movie. <laughs> that's the movie. That's that's the movie in a nutshell. There's a whole lot in there, too. That's not just the movie. There's a whole lot of things. Like, the... the Lane, Lane's imagination is like wild in mm-hmm. this. At one point, he's even working at a burger joint, and the burger comes to life. It's claymation, and the thing starts ripping, like shredding on a freaking Van Halen, Van Halen guitar. Everybody wants some. Singing, everybody wants some. <laughs> like it's just ridiculous and over the freaking top. That whole scene right there is like this. This uh, Frankenstein, you know, puts the meat on it's the thing, lying. lifts it up, yeah, all that yeah. kind of thing. It, it's it's the movie is just strange. The movie is weird, and the movie is awesome. Yes, yes, still holds up. It still holds. I up. Hadn't seen it since I was a, a kid, and didn't really know how far effing gone it was, and just off the <laughs> wall, and comes out of left field and stuff, which yeah. made me like it even more because yeah, um, that's my type. If I had to make a movie, it'd kind of be like that. It'd be like that. Yeah, it, it was. It was good. It was good. It held up. You know, we the last one we did, Kid Culture. Ooh, bless mm. your heart, Kid Culture. <laughs> Not um, so much. Yeah, I think uh, one of my favorite quotes in there was, "This is the the worst acting I've ever had the privilege of watching," or something to that effect. Yeah. Um, but we're talking about better off dead now. Way better experience uh, from reliving that childhood, dipping back into that childhood, and this movie definitely kept those those memories, those good memories. Uh, alive. That was a thing. So better off dead is better. It's better. Okay. 
Go ahead. That's all let's you get, have? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so Better Off Dead. Let's go to Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, 26 critic reviews on this. It got a 77% on the tomato meter. I think that's pretty dang good. I think that's pretty dang good. Uh, audience score, which I've said it once and I'll say it again. Life moves pretty quick. Wait, sorry. No. <laughs> um, I, I would rather take the the audience score, audience score right. over the, the tomato meter because it's people. It's people. With over 50,000 ratings on this Woo! one, the audience score wow. is at 87%. 87%. And that's a, that's a solid rating. That's solid. That's a solid rating. For that's 50, solid. Over what, 50,000? 50, 50,000, yeah. That's crazy, right? So the real question is... What would you rate it? What would I rate it? Ooh, that's the real question here. So we're going to go out of 10. We don't do percentages. We don't do percentages. We don't know how to math like that. Wait a minute. Every point would be 10 points. So yes. we do know how to math so like good. that. <laughs> what do I rate it? Okay. The movie's fun. The movie's creative. Um, it zany. is zany is a good word. It is definitely a, you know. Do you want to put this in like a high school movie category? Yeah, not really. Um, I'm gonna say no. Unlike three o'clock high, you know, sure, definitely sure. high school movie. Um, did I say creative? Yes, I said creative. Uh, the writing, you know, a little weird. There's some weird things in there, but I, I appreciate the weird. Uh, the acting, I gotta be honest, the acting overall was pretty good. Pretty good, yeah, yeah it's pretty it good, good, like front to back, honestly. Um, I'm going to give this. God, and again, it holds up. Okay, the movie holds up. Oh man. I want to put this. I'm going to go with an eight and a half to nine. Eight and a half to nine. It is. It is like that. Okay. It, to me, it's like that. Um, nine would be would probably be pushing the limits of being a little too generous. Um, you know, because when we talk about nines and nines and beyonds, I think of like Shawshank and Goodfellas. That's what I was about to say. As, but, as our as my rating system gets higher up there, the harder it's going to be to get that agree that agreed. nine that ten because agreed. that ten is perfect. That ten. Um, you know what? Like I just I just yeah I just put it in perspective for my. I'm gonna go eight. I, I was gonna go eight. Solid solid eight. eight for sure. Solid eight. Yeah, solid eight. Yeah. Yeah, for a comedy too, especially, especially solid, yeah. solid eight, solid eight. So eight, eight, yeah, yeah, eight, yeah. There it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, guys, that's better off dead. I really hope you guys give this movie a chance um, because it's a good watch, in my opinion. Yeah. And look how handsome John Cusack is. Trying to pick his nose? Yeah, a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. As always, if there's a movie you guys want us to review, um, try to make it a little more uncommon, lesser known, put it in the comment section. We do read the comment section. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. What's the next one going to be? Do you know? Oh, I know. Oh, I know, too. You'll have to wait. You'll have to wait and see. Do you want to give any kind of clue? Um, Kevin Bacon movie. Kevin Bacon. That's all we're going to say. A Kevin Bacon movie. Oh wait, do we have a story? Do we about skiing, have been in the ski school, losing the girl, getting the girl? Um... Yeah, because we we brought up the idea in the first review about you know, kind of doing a personal story that maybe goes along with the movie, um, and we got some pretty good feedback on that from the comment section. And at the point at that time, we had already filmed the kid culture review, so we didn't do anything on that one. So. Hang on, Eric. We're going to think a second here. Do we have a story? No, I mean, I was never in ski school. I wasn't either. I... Never worked at a burger joint. <coughs> I was a kid that was making everything fucking work. Were you? Yeah, I was. You are too, so don't get it messed up. Dodo and the Melvor were fucking the fuck ups. Oh, how about we? How about we? Uh, we tell like the mail order. Were you there when Melvor had the sea monkeys, and Mike put the hot sauce in it? It wasn't one jumped out. It wasn't eye? sea monkeys. It wasn't. What it was wasn't. It? it was triops. It was my triops. Tri but you ordered them, right? I got them at Walmart. Oh, okay, never mind then. Yeah. Um. 
<laughs> but yeah, he's like, ha, 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 Mr. Bond with the Tabasco sauce. Yeah, and it jumped up in his Jumped eye up in his eye ass. when he did. That bench was all wobbly, so he fucking smacked it down. And the salt water got in his eyes, too. <laughs> he looked like motherfucking Joker from uh, Batman like this. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I turned around, I'm like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> Sitting there for 30 minutes trying to get the motherfucker out of his eye, and he finally did. <laughs> You know what? I was like, that's what you get, motherfucker. That's what you get for all that fucking shit you do. That was funny. Guys ask it by try up. <laughs> <laughs> I guess leave that in there. <laughs> Fuck it. I mean, we could tell the story. Like, we just did. We just did, right? Um... <laughs> I don't want to use people's real names, though. <laughs> what, Mike? Mike. Fuck him. Yeah, whatever. Motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, should, should respect man. nature. That's what that's what it boils down to. I Okay, well, that's uh, that's the closest <laughs> thing we have. I don't, it makes no sense. Just like the movie. Just like the movie. That's the, <laughs> that's the closest story we got. So, Eric, you decide <laughs> if you want to leave that in or not. Thanks for watching, y'all. <laughs> Later, y'all.